Today, it is August 31st, 2020, as I record this. My name is Ankro, and I am still here. I decided to record a video on this final day of August because this is the day when six years ago I officially ended my attempt at any type of audience gaining due to content creation for YouTube. I stopped creating videos for the purpose of gaining an audience on this day six years ago. Last year, in 2020, I was thinking about doing something for the fifth anniversary of the August Farewell Extravaganza, but I forgot. Basically, I forgot. <sighs> well, here it is, another August, another year of surviving this life. No, I haven't really accomplished anything since I gave up on YouTube six years ago. There is something that I did try to get going in the intervening years. I made an attempt at learning programming, like seriously learning it. I got a uh, nice big C-sharp book, big thick book. And I started on page one. And I made quite a bit of progress. And I even made a very useful program that I use literally every single day. Well, it's not a program. It's a plug-in for Music B. In fact, I have videos of my, de of my development of that plug-in somewhere on the channel. That was basically the only thing that I had going on in the six years. Let me reduce the gain on this mic because it's getting pretty high. So f absolute failure is basically what I'm trying to say. My failure was followed up by a failure and there will be no more failures. During the August 2015 Farewell Extravaganza, I played a game called Final Fantasy XII of the Zodiac Age. And as luck would have it, this is my main game now. I started a playthrough this spring, and I would say it's been slow going, but I have actually played this quite a bit. I'm going to bring up the Steam overlay, but let me first make sure I know what's going to appear on this overlay before I show it on the screen. All right. 14 hours past two weeks, 77 hours total. I've played quite a bit of Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age. And I have not loved the experience, but I will talk about that as we go. And I just thought it was a nice coincidence that this is one of the games I played on a Final Fantasy Friday. I played, I think, two hours of it. Though, at that point, it was emulated on PlayStation 2, on a PlayStation 2 emulator. Here I have the Steam game, which released, when was that, like 2018, 2019? I don't know. This game did come to PC. I was very, very happy to see that, though I did not get it for at least a year or two. Because it was, they were trying to charge like a full price, $50, and I think they still are. So I think that's enough of a little bit of a intro for why I'm doing this. I have about three extra months that I've been living. I spent the first month 
of that extra time playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I thought I was never going to be able to actually finish. But in my borrowed time, I was able to go ahead, finish it, and even do all of the endgame content and get a platinum trophy on the PlayStation for it. My first platinum trophy in about 10 years. My first platinum trophy was the first Uncharted on PlayStation 3. So I went ahead and 100%ed Final Fantasy VII Remake. Played some other shit, and then I decided I'm going to return to my Final Fantasy XII playthrough. And I have played like 40 hours since then. Right now, I'm at a point in the game where I'm supposed to go continue the main mission in... Oh. Uh, where does it show me what I'm supposed to be doing? Is it the map here? Okay. I'm supposed to be going to Giro Vegan. Which means going to the Feywood. But I have actually spent the past like six, eight hours doing side content. I'm not a big fan of this game, but one thing I'll give it credit for is that there is a lot of stuff to do off of the main mission. Or the main scenario, as a Japanese developer would call it. So I've been doing that. I've been doing marks. I've been doing some side quests. And I believe I still have more side quests to do, so... Let's take a look at my hunts to see what rank 5 hunts I could do. I still have... Or I have a lot of these completed. But I still have some that I could do at this point in the game. Like here's a rank 5. Southern part of a village in the Dalmasca Estrasan. I think this is actually the one that I wanted to do next. I haven't played this in six days. It's been six days since I played Final Fantasy XII, so I'm a little bit unsure of what my game plan was, but I think last time I played, I had finished up some stuff. So I don't think there's anything that I need to do here. I can just head to the Ester Sand. So it's going to be at the village. Which means the best way to get there is to teleport. That is... Is that this? I think it... I think this might be it. I have... I do have a guide. Official strategy guide. No, this is not it. Oh, never mind. Yes, it is. So I actually screwed something up here in this village that I noticed when looking at the strategy guide. There is the low moaning, which is someone who's hurting, and you can get special items based on... Or you can get... Yeah, you can get special rewards based on if you give him enough items and unfortunately I think I screwed up because the items are over there across the river and I th think they're only accessible during the rains and I've progressed the story to the point where it's the dry season again so will he take me across oh he will have you seen the cockatrice in the village Okay. Uh, let's do something with that later. I don't know what that's about. I'll, next time I'm over here, I'll try and find those people in the village and talk to them. See what the deal is. So I might be able to still do it because there are some flowers that need to be collected. These people say anything different? Uh, the season has changed. I'll give you some money. To travel the dinghy. 
It looks like these people are saying the same things. Yeah. The game is extremely dynamic. People in the world will change. I think I've got his maps, yeah. People in the world will change what they say based on story events. Like, they put a lot into this game. It's a massive game. Probably the biggest Final Fantasy they had ever made at this point. Not counting Final Fantasy XI, which was an MMO. But I've heard people suggest that with this game, they tried to make it like an MMO in some ways. Such as the open world. And you've got party members that uh, are automated. So it's kind of like real people are playing with you in, in a way. Like this is, these are my friends here controlling these characters. Ah, he attacked too soon. Couldn't get the steal. See on a bunch of steel polyons. I think those are the boots, the accessory that allow you to uh, avoid these, walk over these traps and not take damage, but I do not have to worry about that because this character I'm controlling, Bosch, can cast Float and we walk straight over that. So there's... Is it this area? There's some kind of fruit to collect. Oh, killed it. So this, this game has a lot of side stuff and I don't I don't want to do all of it because I'm not a big fan of the game. But I've just found myself running around doing all the tedious side missions. Like, here I go. Enticed by this treasure chest. My treasure chests are absolutely terrible in this game. We don't need the bubble belt right now, so we'll go back to the diamond armlet, which gives a chance for better loot from chests. And you really need it, because look at what kind of loot I'm getting. 11 gil out of a treasure chest that I walked all the way around there to get. Look how much money I have currently. 175,217 gil. Before that treasure chest, I had 175,000 206 gil. The treasure system is absolutely terrible in this game. Oh, not a rust. Great. Literally one of the first items you get in the game is a knot of rust, which just does damage to one target. Let's try it on this guy. See how much damage it actually does. 391 damage. This... Not a rust, this. This is a game that has many elements that I hate, that frustrate me. Thankfully, the Zodiac Age on Steam has some additional features like the ability to speed up the uh, simulation. What's going on here? Weathered Rock. Oh, I didn't do this before? What does that do? Create a shortcut? Creates a little shortcut, kind of pointless. So the speeding up of the game is really nice. Because
because it is a very grindy game in keeping with its I don't know for sure if they wanted to make it like an MMO but that's what I've heard people say I would believe it there are so many things that are MMO like so I think I'm gonna have to look up this fruit like what where am I getting the fruit from? Is this even the right area? It's none of these, so I'm going to look it up. I have a window capture for the strategy guide. don't remember what it's called okay here it is patient in the desert the party must find veil blossom dew which is only found along the cliffs in the broken sands area you must complete this part later in the game during the rains when the ferry is operational so I think I actually have one veil blossom one veil blossom do oh I just noticed I have qu quite a few drop frames due encoding lag it's only one percent so it should be fine sorry I do remember picking up one did I sell it off or do I still have it I still have it I think if you give three to the guy oh something here another weathered rock I think if you give three to the guy you can get the best item which is a gold armlet which is extremely useful and I hope that I can get that golden armlet doubles the AP or the SP that a character that has it equipped can gain from battles. I have two golden armlets right now and I keep them equipped at all times. I change the characters that they're equipped on periodically. But I need to find more. What is only found along the cliffs in the Broken Sands area. Upon gaining access to the northern area, search the Broken Sands section for flowering plants in the ravine. The party can extract a drop of Veil Blossom dew from each of the three trees. Oh, okay, and it's got a map that shows where the trees are. They're through the center of this area. Let's check that out. Hopefully it's still available in the dry. Ah, nice. Okay. Okay. Is there another plant down there? I think that might be it. I think this might be it here. I think I need three. I'm gonna have to double check again. Return the three drops of Veil Blossom due to Dantro's wife in South Bank Village. Next on the list is a giant serpent skin, which is a reward from the Marauder in the Mines hunt. Complete the hunt, give the skin to Dantro's wife. Oh, shoot. I might have sold that. I probably sold that. I think I've done that, huh? Yeah. It's the Nidhogg, man. That's... That's basically at the start of the game. And, of course, I sold that. Of course.
There's probably another way to get it. Another source. Let's steal from this brown chocobo. There may be a, another chance for me to get that serpent skin. If it is, then it's worth it because, like I said, the golden armor is very good. But most of the activities in the game, the rewards are garbage. That has to be said straight up. The rewards are not exciting in any way. Ninety percent of the rewards are stuff that's not new, stuff that's not unique, stuff that doesn't change the game play, stuff that doesn't improve my status in the game. Like knots of rust. You complete a hunt, you get a pathetic amount of guild. Her gill. Like a few thousand gills. Alright, Bosch level 4. You think there's an achievement for getting every character or an average level across all the characters of 40? I think it's average level, which is an interesting way of doing it rather than say, make all your characters 40. I just check for. I always check for chests. I shouldn't. It's gonna give me knots of rust. It's just such a disappointing system. I can't believe they thought it was a good idea. I just. Treasure chest should be exciting in a JRPG. I'm just glad I never sold that first Veil Blossom do. I. Remember picking it up and thinking, huh, that was interesting. I just picked this up off the ground here. And yeah, it does turn out to be needed for something. All right, so let's talk to these people here to see. She says the same thing. All right, this is the guy in the Astra Sand for that haunt. What's the deal? What happened? Why is he your name? Or oh, is this guy a prisoner? A former prisoner. You were an Albina, weren't you? Yeah, you're the one when picking a fight with Deguza. And you made your escape. Am I right? No use denying it. Hell, I was a prisoner there too. Me and my brother made our escape just after you did. Made it through one of the balls and tunneled our way out through with our hands. Came out in the Baham Passage. Thought we were free. <laughs> Had scarcely moved when the blood wing swooped out of the gloom. It didn't land any serious bites on me, but my friend number 982 weren't so lucky. I hefted him on my shoulder. Jumped down in the water and eventually washed up here. I feel like I've been given a second chance. I don't mean to waste it, but first I gotta see number 92 here gets the revenge he deserves. And why you gonna kill this blood ring? It's lurking. Deep in the west annex of the Baheim Passage. Show it no mercy. Alright, Bloodwing Hunt begins. And I saw that I was overdriving the mic there. My apologies for any distortion in the audio. You found the Veil Blossom Dew. Wonderful. They should flush the poison from the body. Now we have only to wait and hope. Okay, is that it? 
for now. You don't have anything else to say right now? <laughs> Alright, here's the sand. Oh, right, this is another one of the side quests I've been working on is to the Great Cockatrice Hunt, or whatever it's called. I have to chase down cockatrices that are in cities and towns across the world. And each one has a unique way that you have to uh, get them to go back home. I want to see Tori, but I ain't going nowhere near that bleeding nathal. I ain't thick. <laughs> they all have... Uh... How do I put this? They all have lower class British accents. British English accents. They say nothing. And something. Which is actually something that I took notice of with Oddly. Because Oddly, she doesn't have like a lower class English accent, but Sometimes when she says nothing, to me it sounded like she said nothing. And I didn't know if that was a real, if I was just hearing things, or if that was real. And playing this game and talking to these cockatrices, I think it is a real thing that people in England say. They add a K to ING word sometimes. Okay, so she wants to see Tori, but won't go near Nathal. Can I find those people here? Right, friend with Tori. Who's Nathal? And who's Aril? Is this guy Aril? I, I don't... <laughs> Let's see what happens. That won't work. So Sass is scared of that old wolf Nathal. He'll never make it. Okay. Who's Aril? So I'm guessing this is like a puzzle where you gotta do it in the right order. So, Aril is a boy. I don't know what his deal is. This Aril? Alright, let's go back. You should help Sasan cross from the south bank. Of course, Sasan won't go near Nathal, so it could be kind of tricky. Alright, let's see what happens if we leave him here. Can I skip this? Yes. And there is... Oh, shoot. That Nathal ain't got no respect. Me tailing a bleating chew toy, so when the boy is gone... Nathal gets a bit confrontational. Am I able to... I'm, see, my anticipation is I need Aril to do something with Nathal, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe Aril had to be on the other side before Nathal would come. Okay, they're both here. But... I mean, the dog's right here for when Sasan comes across, so. That could be a little bit of an issue with him disembarking. Oh, he's running free. Nathan, yeah, ain't nowhere to be seen. 
Well, there's nothing stopping me from popping over to the north bank and seeing Tori. <laughs> nothing. All right, so he's ready to go, but I mean, it's... The only reason he's not here is because he's over there, which is where you're trying to go. Let's... See what happens. So I do have the guide, and the guide would probably tell me exactly how to do this, but I do try to not use the guide unless I have a reason to. I have not been reading it uh, word for word to see what to do. Which is how I have played games in the past. I like to play JRPGs with a guide. Usually. So I can't talk to anyone specifically about this situation. Should I take him back across? Okay. All right. So he's just scared there. And I'm not able to have any of these people leave. Reset. Alright, what is our... The boy, what is his deal? Okay, he's like... Playing with him. Why are they just... But why do they go and just... They just stand there at the pier. Like, why can't you guys go somewhere else? Alright, let's see what happens. We do it in the other order. I just want to try things out a little bit. Okay, now he's running... Running around. Oh, no! Dang it. He's moving freely, and we still have the boy on this side. I don't know what... I think that's him. Oh, nothing stopping me from popping over to the north bank and seeing Tori. No, that's not... That's more of an RP uh, accent. I don't have much practice. with a, uh, the accent that these cockatrice have. Oh, great. He comes back over here. So there must be something else that I can interact with. Another piece to this puzzle.
So if you try to take them over and it doesn't work, it just resets everything. But I'm not seeing anything that I can do. I'm not seeing any other piece of the puzzle. It's just... You don't have a rod. I don't know how to get your rod, man. What if you skip frames due to encoding lag now? Also, this video is currently at 19 megabytes, or excuse me, gigabytes. That's fine, I'm going to be re encoding it to H.264. Can you distract this dog somehow? Everyone's still talking about the cactoid situation, which is um which is why this village was abandoned early in the game. But it's been dealt with now. Okay, we'll keep them here, and then I don't see any kind of like here. He is. He's chasing the chocobo now. Could the chocobo have anything to do with anything? I don't see what the point of the boy is at all. He just, he chases the dog around. And that's all he does. Let's see if anything is different with the chocobo when Errol is across. This is a terrible thing to record. But I don't care. <laughs> like I said, six years ago I gave up on producing videos for the purpose of an audience. Six years ago today, I posted the final farewell, which was an eight hour video of the first act of Final Fantasy VII. That was before Final Fantasy Remake had even been announced, I think. Had it been announced at that point? I don't... It was announced a long time ago before it finally released last year. It may have been announced by that point. Our guest is fully recovered now. Should be just around back. Wanted to give you a word of thanks, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Covering Traveler. You the one has brought them medicines for me while I was laid up, are you? Suppose I owe you my thanks, boy. I'm not gonna do that reptilian voice again. That overdrove, overdrived, overdriven the mic. Quite a few skip frames due to encoding lag. What is going on? I'm a treasure hunter by trade. Heard there was a great treasure deep in the Barham Passage, so I posted two mates at the entrance and went in. But I was played false. Didn't find no treasure, but a hideous beast lying in wait instead. When I saw that, I panicked and ran. Next thing I remember is waking up here, being nursed back to health. Well, I ain't going back in there. 
You want the key to Barheim? It's yours. Oh, I needed to get the Barheim key from him. Okay. There's more than one way into the Barheim passage. I heard there's another entrance somewhere in the Ester Sand. Good luck finding it. Time I was leaving. Them fool mates of mine will be wondering where I've got to. Take care, you hear? You've nothing without your health. Heh. <laughs> He gave me the balance moat. Raider in the game returned to the village and speak to Jantro's wife. She indicates that the patient is fully recovered, so speak to the recovering traveler behind the house. It turns out the person is a treasure hunter who has found a great treasure in Barheim Passage. The treasure hunter gives the party the Barheim key and wrenches an entrance to Barheim in the Esther Sand. In addition, the treasure hunter hands the party a reward, balance moat, magic gloves, or a golden amulet, depending on how many items Jantro's wife received from the player. So I think that's something that you probably have to know going in what to do. Otherwise, you're very likely to screw it up and not get the best item. So I think I got the worst item, the balance moat. Secret entrance is located at the Murmuring Defile in Dalmasca Estersand. Bandit Chief, formerly the recovering patient, is waiting there. Okay. Where is that? All oh, right, that area. Yep, that area definitely has a locked door. All right, I'm looking up this great cockatrice hunt solution. Let's just just get it done. This is a locked PDF, so I'm not able to create any more bookmarks or edit it in any way. This was actually produced as a PDF, and they locked it. There just aren't enough bookmarks, so it's a pain in the ass to navigate the guide. All right, so Sasan. Sasan wants to see Tori in North Bank, but won't go near Nathal. Speak to Chigri about crossing the river to learn more. Select like Nathal when Chigri asks about taking someone along. Return to South Bank Village and select no one when asked. Speak to Chigri again. Choose to cross the river with Errol. Return to South Bank Village once more when, while taking no one back. Talk to Chigri one last time and select Sasan when crossing the river. Follow Sasan into North Bank. Speak to him again. He returns to Giza and the party earns a Koga Blade. What? But he won't go anywhere because both... Because Nathal is there right at the dock. Turn to South Bay Village, select no one when asked. Speak to Chigri, cross with Errol. Go to South Bank Village again. Talk to Chigri and select Sasan. This is... Wait. Where did that work? And not work the first time. Now they're playing together. Did I send the boy across first at one time? I think the way it works is when it's just the dog, he goes over to this area. And then if you send the boy, the boy c comes across and he sees the dog and he comes over and plays with him and they both stay here in this area. I think that's the idea behind that. 
I think I had sent the boy across first. That time that Sasan was stuck on the dock. I bloomin' miss you, Tori. What's it gonna take to get you to settle down with me, eh? Yeah, I, I couldn't do the accent. I, I haven't heard it in a while. And I've never tried to speak it, so I can't. I can't do it. Well, if it isn't Sasan, run away from Giza again, have you? Terra must be worried sick. What's Terra got to do with it? This is between you and me, Tori. You're always trying to avoid it, but enough's enough. No, enough's enough. It's, it's time, time. So I don't know how it would ever, all these words would be pronounced. It's time to listen to your art. To your art. <laughs> I can't do it. I just don't know it. I just don't know it. I'm glad you came all the way, all this way to see me, but think of your poor friends back in Giza. It's not fair to them. Think how Terra must feel. You know you're the only cockatrice for me, Sasan. What did you just say? Now be a good boy and head back home to Giza, all right? I'm your favorite? Onst? Sure you ain't pulling me leg? You don't fancy Ren or Moomer? I haven't met Ren or Moomer yet. You know you're my favorite, Sasan. You're your lat. I'm only your blinking mar- I'm o- I'm only your blinking favorite. Me? <laughs> I better hurry back to Giza and announce our plans for the wedding. All right, Sasan, off to Giza with you now. Give my best to Tara and Danya. I'll be waiting. Can't hardly wait to see the look on everyone's face when I give them the good news, though. <laughs> Thanks for your help, son. I'd never have gotten close enough to propose without ya. Here's a little something for your trouble. Summink. Summink. <laughs> Did you help Sasan reach the North Bank? That couldn't have been easy. He can be a bit of a chicken at times. Take this for your trouble. Coca Blade, as the guide told me. All right. Mother obviously thinks you're going to be his wife. These are people from the, uh, the Giza Plains, these two women, this man, I think. Oh no, she's from this village, she's not from Giza. They just wear the same clothes, which is a little confusing. Alright, so let's head to the Ester Sand, secret entrance into Barheim. Cross this thing for the last time in the video. Oh, they return back across, okay. Sure. <sighs> I don't want to make this video too long because I am going to have to re-encode it. And also, I'm re recording it at the native resolution that I'm playing it at, which is 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels, also known as 4K. It's not worth it to kill these enemies, but I guess I can get a little bit of LP. I think I called it SP earlier, it's LP, license points. And I'm not, I'm not gonna do a whole thing complaining about this game. I will, if I do that, I will do it in my Steam review. 
when I complete the game. I'm just here to play it. Just on the last day of August, on the sixth anniversary of me giving up on YouTube content creation. It was a big celebration I had. Videos every single day in August. It was something special. I didn't quite go out with a bang. Those videos got barely any views, but it was something that I could do and feel like, hey, I'm doing something significant here. Though I did see that someone had left a comment three months ago on one of those videos. It was the Space Siege video. He was like responding to something that I had said in the video. I don't really... I don't know. It was years ago. I didn't want to rewatch it or anything. I just replied to the guy, Whoa! I made a video on Space Siege six years ago? <whistles> Space Siege is a crappy game. I didn't like it when I played it for the August Farewell Extravaganza, and it's not, it hasn't been well received. Far, far, far beneath Dungeon Siege. Dungeon Siege, specifically Dungeon Siege 2, was a really, really great game. Dungeon Siege 1 I played, and I didn't like it. It was very primitive version of Dungeon Siege. Dungeon Siege 3 I played and I thought it was a disappointment. They changed the style of the game. And here I am talking about other games. All I wanted to do was say Space Siege. That Space Siege video got a comment. Six years after I made it. Almost six years because it was three months ago. That that comment was left and I replied. And then he replied saying... He replied to me saying, Wow, I made a video on Dungeon Siege. Ew. Just because it's a crappy game. And he replied saying, Aha, so you know. I don't know what that meant. I actually don't know what that meant. And I did not... Did not reply to ask because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Bandit Chief, here's your interest to Barheim, boy. If there's any treasure to be had... You're talking to Bosch. You're not talking to Vaughn. Don't call him boy. I'm forced to appear as Vaughn in the cities and in that village. But this is my actual party makeup right now. You're talking to a man. A very important man. Bosch von Ronsenberg. That past a place called Terminus Number Seven. Fierce beasts down there, I'm sure. So I'm going to. My plan for the rest of this video is going to explore this place again the Barheim Passage and see if I can find that mark. Alright, where is that area he's talking about? Well, oh, there is something there that I haven't looked at. I haven't been here in months. I know that there are enemies that... Or there were enemies that you had to... Stop them from getting electricity. Gate is firmly closed, okay. I don't know if it's possible to get through there anymore, but we'll...
go this way. And see what's going on. She not want to steal. Oh, it was it had already taken some damage, so that gambit did not go into effect. Really, if I was to do a review on this, it would be very significant. Because there's a lot that I would say about this game. I do not think this is a good Final Fantasy game. One of these is probably a enemy. Oh, nope. Not this time. So let's go over here and hit the left area. Still shrouded on the map. Okay, here's an enemy. But I can kill the Mimics in one hit at this stage. They were actually kind of tough. Here's another one. They were kind of tough when I was coming through here in the story. So many knots of rust. I don't know why they start with less than full health. Oh. <laughs> Slipped out of my chair. I didn't realize I was getting so close to the edge. Getting one step closer to the edge. All right, we got two paths. Let's take this one first. Looks like it. Leads to a dead end. This is a trap we can avoid. What level are these enemies? 39, okay, so they are on my level now. Which means they won't die. They won't die in one hit. They will still die very quickly and effortlessly. All right, we got a dead end here. Let's check it out. All right, so let's go ahead. Make myself and my party immune to the traps. Sometimes the traps can have a positive effect, but usually not. Definitely not worth it. To test them out. Okay, let me get Vaughn in here. Because he's still level 39. Let's get him some experience. LP is shared across all characters at all times, but experience was only gained by people in the active party. Adamantitian. Okay. Stole a water stone. Oh, let's... Weak to arrow. Okay. Oh. Apparently, Bosch is immune to lightning. And apparently, we were able to silence him so he wouldn't be able to cast any more lightning regardless. Absolutely destroyed. Okay. Another chest to disappoint me with. 95 gil. Absolutely insignificant. The only real way to make money in this game... Thank <laughs> you. 
The only real way to make any kind of money in this game is just from the garbage that you get from killing enemies. Which you have to then go to a merchant and sell in an extremely tedious process. No. That's not who I wanted you to attack. Why would you even attack that guy? He wasn't the closest enemy. This is, like, this is the game. It's like, the characters never... My characters never are playing optimally at any point in time. They're always doing something slightly suboptimal because you have to control them with gambits. And the gambit system is not complex or robust enough to let you be optimal in all situations. So an arc scale, that I believe is a measure weapon. Which, with my current license job setup, is equipable by an ash. Arc scale, on hit shell. I don't know how to effectively use these because f for these to work, you have to attack your party members and there's a chance that they will gain the buff that's associated with that item so like this guilt measure is protect multi-scale is bravery caliper is haste so i have to attack my own party members if i do that manually it's super tedious because i gotta attack then i gotta wait for the cooldown then i gotta attack Select the next party member, then attack. I can't figure out how to set up a gambit for it. Because if I say attack any of my characters, any of my friendly characters, she will just constantly attack her own characters. That's not very effective. So... I haven't been using them because it's just too tedious to have to manually control that. That's just a terrible reason to not use a weapon because it's because it's too tedious. It looks like that was the grand prize for coming here. That arc scale. Some of most of the chests are randomized, but some of the chests do have a specific uh, item in them. That arc scale is probably specific. The guide does inform me of such things. Also, that Coda Blade. Oh, he was already using one. Whoops. That's. That was a useless reward then. Because I already had it. Dang. It, it really is shocking how terrible some of the rewards are for the side quests and the marks in the game. Most of the activities give you just stuff that's not interesting. I, I, I can't believe they messed this game up so terribly. I think they really messed up. They put a lot of effort into it. They did some things that are quite cool. There's a ton of content. But man, the things that they screwed up, they really screwed them up. These are actually not hostile. Huh. Well, let's get float going again. Oh, what the... Why did you guys think that was an invitation to attack everyone? never really in control of a bunch of chests here 
Some of them might even not be mimics. Ooh, Toxify. That's actually something of interest. But yeah, these are all mimics. But they will go down quickly. I think he got hit by the death effect on Bosch's weapon because he just suddenly collapsed when he still had HP left. I have not seen that happen very often, but it has happened a few times. All right, Toxify is a black magic, I believe, which Ash might need to learn the license for. There it is. Damage all foes in range over time. Okay. Oh, in this view I can see what she can cast. Okay. I need to get her an Esper at some point. Alright, let's get a black magic license. This is part of the tedium of the game. Is You get something new, you can't just use it. You gotta go... Search on the board to find where it is and unlock your ability to use it. It's not fun. It's not an interesting mechanic. It's really tedious. It's really annoying. Oh, she can get that too. She can get bubble. That's actually pretty useful. Bubble will is a status effect that doubles the HP. All right, let's see if we can get a Toxify Gambit. That might be of use. Oh, it's expensive. Damage all foes in range over time. We don't want to use that on a Gambit. We want to cast that one when it's needed. Let's give him a little heal. Meteorite is an upgraded... Is the next tier up of the Knot of Rust. That's all it is. That is all that it is. That's actually a decent amount of gill. Alright, let's go up here and see what's going on. Alright. Another area, more bombs. Stole 500 gold from the Mimeo. Or Gil, excuse me. Alright, Vaughn level 40. That's all characters level 40. Maybe that achievement was not level 40, maybe it was 50. Anyways, let's carry on. of fire magicite. Just manually tell everyone to attack so we can kill it as quickly as possible. Okay, we're good. Bombs, of course, can explode, which will deal a lot of damage to my party. Right, some skeletons. Skeleton mages. Okay, let's deal some damage to that guy so he will... We will no longer try to steal from him. Oh, 
Is he immune to poach? Let's deal some damage. Ash is about to go down. I think I had turned her healing gambit off. I think I turned it off for some reason. I think I did not want her to attempt to heal. I think I had another healer with better healing spells doing that. But we can turn that back on for now. Float. That's great. That's just just the best. Right, I want to go over here before I continue down the path. Ooh, collapsed. The game does have a lot of areas, though they're mostly just empty. No events. Nothing to generate any interest in them. It's really unfortunate. It's just so much about the game that's good, but then just falls short. All right, here's the map. Barheim Candle. The candle reveals hidden areas on your map of the Barheim Passage. Okay, so I already had the map. It was just expanding the map. And it looks like this is a very large area. Oh, and it goes to another area. There's Terminus number seven, which leads to an unknown place. Interesting. Like it, it's intriguing. You see it like, oh, wow, this place is really big. There's a lot here. But it turns out Most, most of the maps are just, no, oh, he blew up. Can we please do some damage so we can stop stealing? Oh, Ash made another steal attempt. It's just gonna be some enemies like this. Some treasure chests that have garbage in them. Maybe there'll be something new that has any value. If I'm lucky. Well, we'll just explore. Oh, how am I getting past this? Oh, great. The... Float expired at the perfect time. I think disease is hard to get rid of, which is really, really bad. Really, 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 really bad. Professor of Disease, preventing the healing of wounds. Remove with a serum. That's an item that I've never heard of. That's so... Bullshit. Balthier is able to use Isuna, but I don't think it works. It doesn't work on every effect. Yeah, miss.
That's so unlucky. I don't think it can be removed until I hit a save point. It's not showing any save points here. So we will just not use them. Don't start the steel attempt. And there really isn't anything special for me to say on the sixth anniversary of the end of my YouTube attempts. It, it was a failure. I continued with live streaming for years. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Actually, there is more to say. Today is also the eight-month anniversary of the end of the solo live stream. I had recalled that, but I forgot to say it at any point in this video, but I just remembered. The solo live stream is something that I did for several years. Let's see if I could get anything going in the live streaming business. That business is impossible to get into. It's impossible to do anything in there. And so I had to give up on that as well. I did it for years, put in thousands of hours. And I have... Nothing to show. I need to go down there first. Nothing to show for it. So I decided to do one final stream on New Year's Eve, 2020. December 31st, 2020. I decided to do my final live stream. I have not done a single live stream in eight months. That is the longest time I have gone without live streaming by far since since I ever first live streamed that's the longest time scathe mode that's actually kind of nice it could come in handy disease goes away after a certain amount of time many of the negative stat effects do go away hundred and eighty eight gill wow Kaganui okay that could be either a ninja sword or it could be a uh, weapon that the Bushi can use, which in my playthrough is Fran. Alright, I needed to buy those, but let's see if that's a weapon. 
she can use. I have to just tediously look for it. Masamune Kuba. I'm thinking it's probably a weapon for yes, a ninja sword. It has a slow effect. And it does less damage than what he has currently. Slow effect could be useful. Maybe some point. I'm gonna keep Bosch out, see if his disease goes away. go from here. A precarious cart. Make a path. Successfully steal. Yeah, we did. Can we kill this guy? Like, come on. Oh, Frey must have missed that manual attack I sent out. She was still trying to steal. It's the end of this map. So there's one little area that I can get to from the next part of the map. Uh, let's go there first. Like, this is an interesting area. It's an underground train track, but there's just not much lore. <gasps> Here, okay. That's of interest. Whenever you get anything of interest, it's a big deal. Whenever you get anything of interest. Lower one foes, magic resist. Could be useful against some bosses. See what we got going on over here. Expect a chest. This is probably a chest spawn location, but not this time. What's this? Alright. Fran, you need to stop attempting to steal. Attack the dead bones so you can stop trying to steal from him. Yeah, disease means no healing for him. And he is 96 HP. kind of funny how it it doesn't show him with his real max HP number it just shows his current HP as his max HP because you can't heal him that's kind of clever actually sounds good get rid of that Oh, 
blinded everyone. We don't care about Reflecta. We're hitting you with our melee weapons. Another thing I hate is the characters after combat have to put their weapons away. And when they do that, it stops you from moving. And it also prevents you from interacting with objects. So even though I had the ability to interact here with the treasure chest, it just went into the combat menu because of that animation to put the weapons away. So I'm just going to be running around here. As my characters do all the fighting automatically. We're going to cure that blind automatically. We're attempting to steal from the Spectre that we've already successfully stolen from. And there's just, there's no better way to do it. There's no way to do a steel gambit where they won't attempt to steal from something that's already been stolen from. You just, the best way to do it is to say, if, if they have 100% HP, If the enemy has 100% HP, attempt to steal. That's the best way you can do it. There's no better way. There's no actual way to make a steel gambit that's perfect. That's ideal. Oh, great, I'm stuck into the fight here. I did it again. I try to activate it. She's doing the animation. Put away her staff. We gotta get out of this area before float expires. Fuma roll, okay. What? Are there two chests on top of each other there? I don't know what the Fuma roll is. Weapon? Oh, it's a hand bomb. Hand bombs kind of suck, actually. Vaughn can use them, but they, they they suck. Sorry, they suck. Wish I could say otherwise. Okay, and let's put him back. Because I don't want him to die, because I do actually want him to at least stick around to cast float from time to time. I do have a bunch of accessories that will allow me to be immune to traps if I equip them, but I don't want to equip an accessory for that. I just want to cast float. Okay, Fran, you need to attack. Wait, I don't know if she just attacked. Also, let's get a, another party member in here, shall we? Get Balthier in here since he's got a blind, uh, blind the gambit. Could we kill this thing? Oh, he keeps parrying. Like, give me a break. Dead Bones K has nothing to steal. Okay, well let's.
I hate it when they survive with like 10 HP. It seems to happen every time. Both of those last two enemies survive with pretty much empty health bars. So this is this is the game here. This is pretty much 99% of the game. Just run around large areas that are mostly empty fighting the same enemies. Same two or three enemy types per screen. Guys, weak to holy. They're all weak to holy. I don't have any holy magic. She's got some magic. I don't know how much damage it's going to do. She's got, like, no magic power, but try it. Okay. More enemies come out of nowhere. Look at him. Surviving with barely any HP. That's amazing. Spell moat. Not an exciting piece of treasure by any means. I can't even get a good chain going in this area because there's two different enemy types that keep popping up. You got the skeletals and you got the ghosts. So I can't get a good chain going. Oh, look at that. A ghost. And the chain just got broken. With the chains, if you kill the same enemy type... ...repeatedly... ...there will be chain bonuses that give better loot. And... There's probably things you can do in this game where getting a high chain bonus is needed to do something. Like get... Get certain items that you need, but... At this point, there's really... It's just... Just a chance to get some more money. Because you get better items that sell for more. Just look at how tedious this is. I'm just I'm just moving my characters. They automatically fight. Okay, let's attack the Spectre because I think she stole successfully from it. She stole from the Dark Bones. And I have to steal. I have to have these steals going on because that's how you make money. Like I said, you, you make money by selling items. You do not make money from opening treasure chests. You do not make money from marks. You do not make money from side quests. It's from selling monster loot. Not interactive. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, it's Bloodwing. It's Bloodwing. It's Bloodwing. It's 
So he has no weaknesses. Let's see if we can expose his defenses. Do the uh, shear, yeah. So we've lowered his defense. I don't know if it stacks. I don't know if Achilles will work. I don't think so. I think that was immune. Let's see if oil will work. Said miss. Wow, she just got a 5 8 combo. Sweet. Let's give her a bubble. Because it really wants to attack her. I'm going to give her a decoy as well. Alright, so we can do some mist attacks here. He's at less than half health, so. Go for quickening. I haven't done this in almost a week, so I'm probably going to screw it up. No holding back. I never miss. So with the quickening, it's. You're supposed to try and get as many attacks in before time runs out as you can. Yeah. And you you consume missed charges. Let me show you how it's done. But every cycle you get a random chance to regain missed charges, which allows you to continue oh. attacking. And you can re-roll by pressing the right trigger, but it's tough because you have the time keeps counting down, so you gotta be super quick and super I got it. Oh I had a mischarge, but I I should have used that mischarge. But I had a a two charge attack, so that's actually kind of fine. You're going to love this oh no, I just got times up. Oh, man. I just needed, like, a quarter of a second longer. I could have done another level two attack. So I did 10,000 damage, which is absolutely nothing. But he's going to go down here pretty soon. Can we finish him? Thank you. So this is the mark system. That was a level 5 mark. Some of the most interesting fights in the game are the marks. And that was mainly me just sitting here watching the fight go with my standard gambits. This game is not good. This game is not good. I think Balthier has a gold needle, and he does not. Let's get rid of that soft effect, or er, petrify effect. It The item to remove stone was called soft in previous Final Fantasies, so that's why I said that. 
I hope I don't have to come back this way to get out of this area. That would be some shit. Even though the fights are just fighting themselves, and I'm just watching, I, I still don't want to just go through a gauntlet of 30 enemies. When I can't even build a chain because there's two different enemy types. Gigas hat. Pretty sure I already have that though. Still can't steal from Spectre B or P. Wow. Still can't steal from him. All right, we got our dark magicite, which is a garbage item. That's just gonna sell for like 75 gil. Would you enemies chill out? Stop spawning more enemies. Fang, that's another damage item. I never use those. They're just never worth using. Alright, stop trying to steal from Spectre S. That phase out attack forces me to waste. Oh, great. Another enemy just spawned. Jeez. Stop phasing out. You're killing me with this. Sh Such a waste of time. I hope someone activated the trap, but it wasn't too bad. I think he had a gold needle gambit. No. Nope. I got rid of it at some point. Love to get out of here, turn in that Ooh, that's what we want. Turn in that blood wing and then in this video. Hopefully I can do that in the next 15 minutes. It's been a long time since I've saved. Yeah, it's been over an hour. But thankfully the this version of the game has automatic autosave. Yes, automatic, automatic save. It has auto save. Whenever you transition between areas. So you can never lose too much progress. Which is good. I think the features that they added to the game to, that just save time and avoid wasting time are really valuable because this is an old game. And if you're going to play an old game, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time waste a whole lot of time with it. What is this? This could be an interesting fight. A fight where I might actually have to change up my tactics. Oh, I think this is a Esper fight. Okay, that's a great thing to have in a video like this. This could be a challenging fight. Alright, alright. Let's see. Zalera braces against attacks. 
What does that mean? Okay. Actually, you can steal. Or maybe you can't. Oh god. Disable. I just stole a pebble from Zolera. Alright, now... Let's get rid of... That. Let's get the item that makes me immune to disable. I forget what it's called. Was it black belt? And you also black belt. If Pinello gets disabled, we'll just oh, we're doing zero damage to him. Okay, can magic damage him? Or them? It looks like it's two... Two characters. Nope. I did zero damage. I suppose this is a... Sort of a gauntlet fight. Ah, shoot. Let's try that again. Okay, it says it worked. Zulera Reddy's kill. Alright, let's raise him up. Oh, we're dealing damage now. Let's go with the quickening. He's got a mischarge. We're casting Evanescence again. It's up. So these these big battles no back. typically have phases to them. So as his health goes down, he'll start doing different stuff and. Probably will start getting more difficult. Yeah. I, had to, I had to re roll to get a mischarge there. Okay, another Evanescence. Not bad. Another Whip Kick. Alright, we're getting a decent number of uh, combo here. The higher the combo, the better the finisher attack will be. I have one second left. Ah, oh, shoot. Yeah. 
I do still have full mischarges on my other party members that aren't currently in use right now. Windburst, I've never seen Windburst before. But I will save those for... I did good damage. I'll save those for later because he'll probably start getting harder. Ah, oh, shoot, confuse. I want Penelo to keep on wailing on him. So Balthier will deal with that. Level two sleep. Oh, he's almost dead. Keep, keep hitting him. A oh, level five death. Oh shoot, I think two of my characters are level 40. <laughs> so they... All of them are level 40. All right, that's fine. They can finish this off. Oh wait, Penelo was level 41? No, they were all level 41. Why did they dive to level five death? All right, let's just... Let's just, let's just overkill this. There's only, there's a, there's a time limit on this fight too. I forgot about that, but we're doing just fine. This is the first time I've seen this attack. The level three Vaughn quickening looks epic. First time I've seen this level two attack for Bosch. These attacks are very cool, but this doesn't do as much damage as you might hope for. Had to re-roll quite a few times, losing time. But we got something at least. I gotta re-roll. Ooh, got one more Nord Swain's glow in. And then I'm gonna be out of time. Oh, gave me a little bit extra time to re-roll and then get a Heaven's Wrath. Gave me a little bit extra time to get a, that Mischarge and then Heaven's Wrath again. Nope. We're out of time. Wind burst. This did like a third of his HP the first time around. So this is definitely gonna annihilate him. Rest in peace. Actually, no, don't rest in peace. Join me. Give me your capabilities.
the other half of my party is dead, but let's go revive them real quick. Actually, let's see who's going to get that. Who has no espers currently? Balthier, Ash, and Pinello. So one of them, hopefully, is going to be able to get a good use out of it. So, depending on the particular license board, a summon can give you access, give that board access to abilities that normally you wouldn't be able to get. So you see this right here. If this right here was a summon, that would unlock a path to get to it. So in this case, there's no path to anything. Let's check the archer. No path to anything. Fran, I think, has... Oh, she's got... A path to Bloodsword and Katarka. So Bloodsword is like a low-level sword. Not of any interest to me at all. Oh, where is it? There it is. Lara is... Not anything there. That leads to Aetherlore 3, but he already has two summons, so we're not going to do that. Hopefully Ash. Okay, that doesn't lead anywhere. That doesn't lead anywhere. That doesn't lead anywhere. Penelo. Penelo, Penelo, Penelope. So that would lead to Traveler. I think that's... Traveler's not that great, but it's something, at least. So, we'll take it. So, let's just check this area for treasure chests. Alright, I'll go revive at the save crystal. And then we'll see where this area exits to. And we're coming up on an hour and 59 minutes. That's about what I wanted for this video, two hours. Celebrate the sixth anniversary of me giving up on YouTube content creation. It was a glorious day. A glorious month, really, when you think about it. A full month of videos of gaming. Every day. Except, I think, the first day I didn't do a video of gaming. I think that was just the announcement. Alright, let's see what this area is going to be. My goodness. Really? I'm in the Garam Scythe waterway. But this is the other side. Oh, actually, no. No, no, no. This is this is fine. We don't need to save, we just saved. So I did a lot of stuff in this Garen Scythe waterway a week ago. This is one of the first places you go in the game, but there is a lot to do when you come back later at higher level. And also, there was something that I had for... I was looking at the guide, and I believe I had forgotten. Something. A dull fragment. Actually, no, I came back and I did that. Vaughn, what are you doing? Oh, he's... He's doing everything except attacking and ending the fight. As everyone else sleeps. Oh, bad breath. It missed. Yeah. 
Oh, sh let's get the golden armlets back. Unfortunate that I missed that other golden armlet, but... Or amulet, golden amulet. But it's fine. I don't know if there's another chance to get one in the game. Or if that's the only way to get three. But... It's fine. Two really is enough. I have more license points than I'm willing to spend as it is. Because there's no point in spending license points on things that I can't use. God, instead of attacking and we're just doing other stuff. The characters just never... Oh. My attacker, Bosch, got put to sleep, so I gotta manually attack. I'm just playing this on 2x speed. I just... I want to get out of here. I want to go, I want to get out. I want to get back to... Get back to the uh, Esther Sand Village. Might as well heal. Wait. There's a path to low town there. Uh, no, it's blocked. So I need to go this way. I need to take a left turn over here. Should not have gone down this way. I need to exit in the central area. I think we got an instant kill there. Is that another instant kill? Yeah, we don't want to fight that guy. Let's just go. Yeah, I did get the dull fragment. Let me just... Check. Dull fragment, okay. This screen right here is where Vaughn's part of the story begins. This is when you f first control Vaughn. You kill a few rats. That's his job, kill rats. Now he's saving the world. It's pretty much every RPG you've ever heard of, ever. Let's keep on trucking along at 2x speed. I want to get to the southern uh, entranceway to Rabanaster. The fastest way to get there is over here. To take the Mughals... The Mughal way. The Mughlin. Southgate. That's where the teleport crystal is. I just want to say that it is cool that that area, the Barheim Passage, connected to Rabanaster. 
the game world is very large. Like I said, it is mostly empty. It's mostly the same two, three enemies in each area. No events, nothing cool to discover. Just some treasure chests with randomized loot that's garbage, usually. A few things that are one-time predefined pickups. But it is cool that they have the world being interconnected. So many of the areas connect to each other. It, it's kind of... It's probably how they designed the world for Final Fantasy XI. It's certainly very similar to Final Fantasy XIV's game world, which is just these small areas that connect and then not a contiguous game world. Like that goes to the Barheim Passage. That goes to another area of the Barheim Passage. That goes to Nalbana Fortress. That goes to the Mosforan High Waste. And then that goes back to the Esther Sand. And then, oh, look, we're back to where I am right now. It all connects, which is cool. All right, let's turn this in. Kill that blood ring, Lydia. Now maybe my friend and I can both rest easy. Thanks, boy. What is my reward for that level five mark? That big epic adventure I went through and the hidden area of the Barheim Passage, the Forbidden Area. 2400 gil, stun bombs, and a vampire fang. That's garbage! Oh my gosh! The stun bombs is at least something unique. But, like I said, the bomb thrower weapon sucks, so I will probably never use it. I have one last thing to do before moving on. Got to lay my friend to rest in his home soil. Pity. After all this time, I never learned his name. Now I'll be heading off. Thanks for your help. My new life begins today. So I guess his friend is crumpled up into that box somehow. That's a good friend. He'll take and fold your body, put it in a wooden box, carry it back to your homeland. That's a good friend, man. That's a good friend. So let's end this video with a display of the absolute tedium that is... A piece of the absolute tedium that is Final Fantasy XII. First of all... Let me sort my inventory. So, as I said, the main way you make gil in this game is by selling loot from enemies and there and this is the loot tab this is all the loot that I've picked up there is no sell all function you are required to tediously go through every motherfucking item and sell and you can't even there's not even a way to have it select the max quantity Quickly, you have to. So the way I do it is I go to the second digit and I press up. That's the most effective way to do it. You can't even just say sell all of this item. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look at that. I'm getting 2,000 for just selling 80 dark magicites that I got from stealing. And what did I get from that level five mark? 2,400. You see how ridiculous that is? How pathetic the rewards are? Oh, look at that. Dark crystals. Like three times as much value than that mark. <sighs> what were they thinking? It's... A high Arcana, I don't think that's worth anything. Outside of just selling it. As I've seen... Several times. There are loot items that do have a use, but the game doesn't tell you in any way. So you can sell it, and then it'll be gone. 
And you just gotta hope there's a way to get more. Iron ore, that's worth a lot. Pebble is the crappiest selling item in the game. Vampire Fang is what I was gifted from that. I don't know if it's got any use. Some of the th some of the items you get if you sell it, you unlock a bizarre purchase. Throat Wolf Blood. I don't think that's anything. Ancient Bones. All right, so I got some new bizarre goods. A double-bladed knife. Dagger with two blades that cross as they taper to a point. It's a weapon. Zwill crossblade. I think I already had that. I think that's a dagger type. There's no... way to sort it by weapon type. Which is just another fantastic thing about this game. I already had it. Well, so I'm not a big fan of Final Fantasy XII, even though I've played almost 80 hours. My playtime is less than 70. I don't know how that happened. I have 70, 79 hours in Steam. I have not let the game just sit running for 10 hours outside of the game, so I don't know what... Oh, I leveled up my clan rank, so I'll have to go back to Mont Blanc to get my rewards for that. This game has so many grinds you can do if you want. I guess technically I've been doing them. The Mark, Mark grind, clan hunt grind, the side quests that give terrible rewards grind. <laughs> oh, how did they fuck up this game so badly? How did they do it? Final Fantasy XIII was more enjoyable for me. I mean, it's I know Final Fantasy XIII, a very very dis divisive Final Fantasy game. But for me, it, it's just this. This game is totally in the opposite spectrum of Final Fantasy XIII, which was very linear. This game is more open. You can go to a lot of places and do a lot of things at any point. Like I, I've been off the main story for about ten hours. <laughs> There's no ability to do that in Final Fantasy XIII. But I think it just it plays better. It's more better paced. The combat system is better. <laughs> the treasure chests are better. All right. That's going to do it. I'm going I got quite a bit of work to prepare this for upload. I don't even know if I'll be able to get it up on the August 31st. It might not be until September 1st that I can get it up, but I am recording it on August 31st, 2021. Six years after the end of my attempt at creating content for the purpose of getting an audience on YouTube. YouTube is even worse than it was in 2015 when I gave up in disgust. It's even worse now. It's even more impossible to get anything going. I, I got out when the gut getting out was good and I got out of live streaming and now I'm getting out of this house I'm getting out of just everything man just I give up on it all There's, I couldn't get anything going in this life that's just too bad nothing anyone could have done nothing I could have done just terrible luck from birth to death. A 
I'll try and finish Final Fantasy XII before that comes, though. This is Iron Crow. I'm signing out.